What's good, y'all? I'm going to give you guys my... Excuse me. All right. I don't know if y'all could see me. Let me turn on one more light right around here. Perfect. All right, guys. I'm going to give you guys my fight week breakdown and prediction of uh, Errol Spence versus uh, Danny Garcia. Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Swift Garcia. And it's happening this Saturday on December the 5th on... Showtime pay-per-view, so tune in, guys. You know, I mean, there's a thing going on with um, people wanting to stream fights and doing all of this other stuff. But when you think about it, man, like, I mean, it's okay to throw your money down the drain once in a while. You know what I mean? When it comes, like, to fighters that are actually uh, going in there, you know, and inflicting pain on each other. You know what I mean? So I, I think, <clears throat> I mean, everybody has their own way of, like, paying and stuff like that, and how to handle their money, but I'm not trying to tell somebody how to handle their money, but it's a good thing, though, you know what I mean, so it is what it is, you, you can spend it however you want, but I see it as a good deed, you know what I mean, so, uh, anyways, let's get back to it, I think Errol Spence should uh, be, I, I don't know, like, if he's going to be, like, a major favorite in this fight, because there are some questions, like, uh, coming around, you know, like, regarding the accident and everything like that, so, you have to keep that into consideration, as always, of course, but the thing is, man, like, Danny Garcia, man, has, like, a lot of power, you know, like, he has a lot of power in that, uh, left hook of his, and he's very notorious for that shit, you know what I mean, so, uh, a lot of people say that since er Errol Spence is a southpaw, he may be susceptible to it, but everybody, like, primarily who has broken down this fight has been focusing on the car crash that he had as an observation to actually break down this fight and that's like one of the major flaws of uh boxing fans today you know like they focus on that kind of stuff rather than uh actually breaking down the fight because what if the accident didn't affect him at all you have to consider that take that into consideration i mean obviously people are gonna still think about the accident in their head but when you're breaking down a fight man like you <clears throat> hold on i had an alarm right now but when you're breaking down a fight like that man like you can't just say one thing you always have to put other things into consideration like um what if it doesn't have what if it doesn't affect them like what if it's like an errol spence that we saw uh, the a year ago or the Errol Spence that we saw that was in shape for Mikey Garcia it all depends on the style matchup and how Errol Spence like approaches this fight you know what I mean so uh Errol Spence really should uh focus on using his jab a lot you know because I've seen Danny Garcia in with so many fighters you know in the past you know like uh Lamont Peterson Mauricio Herrera uh Lucas Matisse Amir Khan all of them but you know what's the one issue that Danny just never could overcome was a jab. You know, Sean Porter used it, and he wasn't necessarily known as a great jabber or anything like that. And same with Keith Thurman, you know what I mean? Keith Thurman used the jab on him later on in the fight. You know, that's why he was winning majority of the later rounds, you know. Some of those were pretty much swing rounds. You could argue that Danny won some of those, but... Uh, Keith Thurman still used that jab to his effect and like Danny Garcia wasn't really adjusting too much to it you know as much as he's a decent count he's a good counter puncher I don't want to call him decent but he's a good counter puncher because remember this is the guy that everybody had like on their top five pound for pound list maybe even nah I shouldn't say top three because Canelo was up there but I would say top 10 to five pound for pound because like he had one of the best resumes in boxing at the time I still remember the arguments that uh, Danny Garcia was like gonna be this big star and everything like that I don't know if you guys could see me better like this but I think Errol Spence should really focus on uh using that jab a lot I know it sounds like a I don't know how to put it like some type of plain ass breakdown but that's one of the major issues that Danny Garcia can never get over you know and Errol Spence can utilize his footwork a lot and if Danny Garcia does try to go fighting backwards man it's not going to look good because I've seen him go backwards. I mean, he could go backwards against a Brandon Reels because I remember him going on the back foot on that fight. But against Errol Spence, man, Errol Spence could cut off the ring. He could actually uh, use the jab to full effect. 
go watch the Lamont Peterson fight, his fight with Lamont Peterson, and uh, the Kell Brook fight, because that shit improved in the Kell Brook fight, because at first it used to be very sloppy, like before he fought him, but since he uh, grew from that Kell Brook fight, man, like he's v improved it by a lot, you know what I mean, it even won him some, most of the rounds in the Sean Porter fight, when you think about it, man, so... Errol Spence, man, is a very underrated fighter, man, but we're about to see what his condition is like on Saturday. Some people are gambling on the accident, saying whether it's going to take an effect or not. Personally, for me, nah, man, I'm just thinking that Errol Spence is going to be the same Errol Spence that we always saw, but uh, the thing is, man, Errol Spence, when you're looking at Errol Spence, you got to look at everything else, you know, like the sparring partners, what his parents are saying. Or what his trainer is saying, Derek James, you know, Errol Spence Sr. And they wouldn't be putting him in this situation if uh, they feel like he wasn't uh, adequate, you know, to actually fight again. You know what I mean? Like, let alone uh, train or, I mean, fight again, train again, let alone fight. You know what I mean? And they allowed the sparring. Like, matter of fact, they've actually I had a couple of sparring sessions already, you know, like besides the two that were mentioned, I think... Uh, it was a Mexican guy and uh, somebody else. I forgot who. I forgot his name, man. I think he was from Texas as well. And they didn't really say too much about Earl Spence's uh, reflexes being, like, uh, deteriorated from that car crash. So you have to keep that in mind. And there is something to keep in mind with the dentures and everything like that. But that's not that much of a non-factor, man. I mean, I heard... Danny Garcia lose a tooth like when Lucas Matisse had punched him, you know what I mean? So, and I really don't think Errol Spence doesn't get hit like that, you know? Like, I think his defense is going to be on point in this fight. I've seen how he looks. He's been training all year, you know, like uh, giving his body the proper rest and everything. And he's been in the gym, you know what I mean? Like, he looks very vasculent compared to how he looked against a Sean Porter. Like, this is an Errol Spence that we saw against uh, Chris Algieri and even against Kell Brook, you know, with all the veins popping out and everything. But uh, it's going to be more than that to be Danny Garcia, you know, being in shape. So I think Earl Spence is going to utilize his footwork. He's not necessarily going to, quote, unquote, run, but he's actually going to use his jab. He's going to go to the body a lot. He's just going to step back and let Danny Garcia throw his hooks. You know what I mean? Like, he's just... That I could see Danny Garcia missing his left hook by a mile, like, as soon as, like, Errol Spence steps back, and then all of a sudden, like, he shoots out a big-ass left hand to the body, you know what I mean? Not just to the head, to the body. Like, he's going to be changing levels, and I could see that actually happening, you know what I mean? But Errol Spence really needs to be careful for that left hook and the big right hand, you know, because I think that's going to be the main issue that he has to look. Not the left hook, as much as people want to bring that up. But the right hand, you know, we saw that knockout Brandon Rios, who had a very, very great uh, punch resistance, you know. So he's got to watch out for that and how Danny Garcia counters. Because Danny Garcia, I think, is a great counter puncher than a lot of people give him credit for. So uh, it's going to be a great fight, man. You know, I can see most certain rounds like mid rounds like where Earl Spence is just going to dog it out with uh, Danny Garcia and he might actually edge those rounds but I think Danny Garcia is going to win his own fair share of mid rounds but I think Earl Spence is going to win by a decision it's going to be convincing and he's going to show that he could box and he could fight you know what I mean in this fight when it's necessary of course obviously he's not just going to pick one way as soon as like he starts feeling the heat from Danny Garcia so I think Errol Spence is going to win by a unanimous decision, 8-4, to 9-3. And the key punches in this fight will be the big left hand to the body and uh, the jab, you know, body and head. And when he steps back, that's when he's going to uh, see Danny Garcia trying to counter him and everything like that. And he's going to see the left hook being telegraphed from that distance you know so it's going to be all about distance for Earl Spence in this fight you know when he steps back and uh, utilizing his footwork his foot placement everything else you know as long as that's okay then he should be able to take this fight very comfortably you know so uh, I got Earl Spence by unanimous decision let me know what you guys think I'm about to do some 
other stuff right now but uh let me know in the comment section like what other content you want to see on this channel but i'm very excited for this fight i'm i'm thinking i hope like if i'm not working that day around that time that i could get the pay-per-view so either ways man i'm still gonna watch it regardless you know obviously but uh anyways i'll catch you guys on the next one take care of yourselves and uh peace